We are 30 miles from Tokyo, gazing at the most famous statue in all Japan, the great bronze Buddha of Kamakura. In Japan, the serving of tea has been raised to the level of a high art, and the ability to perform the tea ritual with delicacy and precision is a mark of the cultivated Japanese. It reflects poise, harmony, and courtesy. Our next slide shows us three of the most famous monkeys in the world. In the 17th century, the trio was supposed to represent India, China, and Japan. But we know it more familiarly as hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. The sumo dog. It was named after the famous sumo wrestlers, giant Japanese men weighing from 250 to 450 pounds, who win bouts by forcing opponents to touch the ground with any part of their body other than their feet. And now, we meet the fabled geisha girls at last. They are highly trained artists. Geisha means cultured person, who have served a long, hard apprenticeship in singing, dancing. You have just seen and heard a little of the Panorama Unit on Japan, narrated by Edward R. Murrow. This is one of 12 units in the Panorama Travel Program. Miss Clark, what is the Panorama Program? Panorama is a book, film strip, and record program that I am finding very useful in teaching. Come, I'll show you. First, the subject matter. These are the countries covered. Japan. Italy. Greece. England. Hawaii. Holland. Thailand, the Holy Land, Soviet Union, India, the Philippines, France. This is not only a study guide, it is much more. It is a genuinely beautiful book for classroom use by both teachers and pupils. In the front of the book, there is a map that gives you an orientation to every picture in the unit. And every book opens with a thorough introduction, covering important historical facts and other general information about a country. Then there is a full page for every frame of the film strip. And the film strip picture is reproduced on the page for easy and accurate identification. Some pages have extra pictures. In the back of the book, there is a page of famous names in the history of the country. A page of important dates, and last, a page of common words and phrases, together with accurate but simple phonetics. Teachers will be glad to know that each book has a record pocket, so that the record and book will always be together. This panorama unit on France is narrated by Charles Boyer. Each unit is narrated by a distinguished person, a well-known authority. Edward R. Murrow, Harrison Salisbury, Basil Rathbone, Lowell Thomas, Hans Conried, David Wayne, Arthur Godfrey, General Carlos Romulo, and Vincent Price. Now we know what the Panorama program is. Will you tell us about its values? One important point is that the Panorama program helps me make better use of my own travel experience. I should tell you that before I present the lesson, I read the book, and especially the introduction, which is very comprehensive. This helps me motivate the lesson with enthusiasm and assurance. So please turn out the lights and listen to Vincent Price. The Young Fisherman demonstrates that children the world over are fascinated by trains. Greece is an extremely hilly country, and train tracks often run close to the water's edge, where the land is level. Our next picture shows us one of the primitive household looms that the women use. In number 22, we see a typical street scene in a little Greek village. A country woman rides to market on her donkey, which at another time might be seen hauling that brightly painted cart. Picture 23 shows us a simple fisherman's hut, gilded by the rising sun. The water, the sky, the distant mountain, here is a scene that reflects the tranquility and mystery of nature. 
One of the great values of the Panorama program is its currency. When these materials were produced, every effort was made to obtain the most recent pictures and information. The quality of the books, records, and film strips speaks for itself. Let me show you a few pictures from Holland, England, the Holy Land, India, and Thailand. This is all very convincing, Miss Clark. You've talked about the content, currency, and quality of the Panorama program. But the most significant question of all is, what are its actual curriculum values? I'm glad you asked that question. Our students are eager for information about other countries and people, how they live, what kind of work they do, the climate, the land, their food, methods of travel, and many other things. Here is slide 26 from Japan, 25 from Thailand, and 19 from the Philippines. What do these tell us about the climate and the food? Obviously that these countries have areas with similar conditions favorable to rice growing, and that rice is one of their most important foods and products. With this kind of motivation, it is easy to get into a study of other places in the world where rice is the essential food and the main item in trade. In contrast, we have slide 26 from the Soviet Union, and 28, and 29 from Greece that tell us that these are wheat and corn countries. On the subject of food, look at the many pictures that tell about fish and fishing. In France, Holland, Italy, the Philippines, Thailand, and then one from Japan showing that fish are so important that they appear as gay festival kites. I told you that in the introduction of these beautiful panorama books, there's useful information about the history of each country. There's information that relates to the history of our country, too. In the book on Italy, it's the story of Columbus. And this is a slide of his birthplace in Genoa. The panorama units are so rich in subject matter. There are nearly 400 beautiful pictures in the film strips. We haven't even mentioned arts and crafts and architecture. Here is a sample of what you can expect to find in this curriculum area. Greece has a wealth of wonderful ancient art and architecture. Everyone wants to go to France to see the jewel-like windows of Chartres and the treasures of the Louvre. The woodblock artist in Japan, the woodcarver in Thailand, and this one in the Philippines shows us modern and primitive oriental crafts. See what we have learned about the world by the time we have toured 12 countries on the magic carpet of Panorama. Miss Clark, we certainly have covered a lot of territory. And it's quite apparent that the Panorama program reaches many subject matter areas and many grade levels. Do you have anything to say about other advantages of the Panorama program? Well, we teachers, like school administrators, prefer having audiovisual materials conveniently located in our own schools. The Panorama program meets this requirement because of its compactness, and because it fits the budgets of most schools. And there are these very important teaching values. The Panorama program is very effective for individual study, for group study, for individual reading and research, and for learning through listening. Ms. Clark has told us about the many values of the Panorama program in teaching. Here's how you can buy it. Each of the 12 titles is sold as a complete unit, consisting of a book, a record, and a standard film strip. You can order as few as six units at $7.50 each. You can order all, or any 12 units, for $78.
As you can see, an order for 12 or more panorama units saves you $1 a unit over the smaller order prices. The quality of all books, records, and film strips is guaranteed. If you are not satisfied after you have examined them, they may be returned within 10 days for full credit. We hope you will enjoy happy traveling and teaching with Panorama. Thank you.